Analogies between electrical circuits and fluid flow are drawn quite often and they can be quite useful. The current, electrical current, is a rate of flow of electrons, just like we have a flow rate of some sort of fluid. The voltage is the potential difference which drives that electron flow, just like pressure, or more accurately, pressure dif differential pressure, drives the flow of a fluid in a circuit. Finally, you have resistance, which inhibits the flow of that electron. What we have in fluid flow circuits is a little bit wonkier. We have friction factors. Just like resistance is the relationship between a voltage drop, a potential difference across a resistor and the current flow through it, a friction factor relates the flow rate through a circuit with the pressure drop associated with that circuit. Now when you put resistors in series in an electrical circuit, the overall resistance of that circuit is simply equal to the sum of the individual resistances. So a 1 ohm resistor in series with a 2 ohm resistor has an overall resistance of 3 ohms and that's regardless of which one comes first, the 1 or the 2 ohm resistor. That's pretty much the same thing that happens when we analyze pressure drop for components in series. A valve with 10 meters of piping downstream of it has the same system curve, which is a relationship between flow and pressure drop, as a 10 meter line with a valve on the end, assuming those are the same valve. But things get a bit stickier when we start analyzing fluid flow and pressure drop through parallel branches in a circuit. With electrical circuits, we have a very useful equation that says the inverse of the total circuit resistance is equal to the sum of the inverse of each individual resistance, each individual branch's resistance. With fluid flow, we don't have a similar neat looking equation for pressure drop and flow through parallel branches. Today, we're going to look at why that's the case and how you analyze these sorts of circuits. The big reason for the discrepancy between analyzing fluid flow in parallel versus analyzing electrical flow in parallel is the existence of Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us that the current flow through a circuit is equal to the ratio of the potential difference across that circuit with the resistance of that circuit. It's a nice, straight, consistent relationship Resistance is simply the constant ratio between voltage and current. We have analogous curves like this in fluid flow. We have system curves, pressure drop as a function of flow rate. But unlike Ohm's law, which is a consistent relationship between those two values, you can have multiple system curves passing through at the same individual point of a pressure drop versus fluid flow rate graph. And that's exactly why we need experimentally determined friction factors and why we set up pressure drop experiments. Nevertheless, if we understand how we got to the resistance and parallel equation, we can use the exact same principle to analyze fluid flow through parallel branches. Imagine you have a 1 ohm resistor and you apply a potential difference of 1 volt across it. If you don't know what that means, it's like saying, slap a one volt battery onto that bad boy. How much current flows through the resistor? Since current equals voltage over resistance, we have one volt over one ohm, which is one ampere. Easy. Now let's take the same battery and hook it up to our two ohm resistor. The current flow through the resistor is one volt over two ohms, which is half an ampere. That's half the value of what we have through our one ohm resistor lower flow because of more resistance. So far so good. Now let's put these resistors in parallel and hook the setup up to a big enough battery at the same voltage. We already know that we'll get one amp through the one ohm resistor, half an amp through the two ohm resistor, and so we'll get a total flow of one and a half amperes. So I get a higher flow through the setup than through either resistor by itself because there are more paths for my electron to take. 
Now pretend that we take the setup and wrap it up in a top secret packaging so nobody except us knows what it looks like inside. All the information we will provide to the people who buy our top secret resistor is that if they apply one volt across it, they will obtain a flow of one and a half amps. They may think they can calculate its resistance because the resistance is one volt over one and a half amps. So they will think that the resistance is 0.67 ohms. They wouldn't know anything about the fact that we have a one ohm and a two ohm resistor inside the package. They would say that the current flow of one and a half amps through their resistor is due to one volt divided by 0.67 ohms. And we know that it actually comes from the sum of one over each individual resistance. That's where this equation comes from. Imagine the battery we used wasn't one volt, but nine volts instead. So I have a higher driving force putting more current through the circuit. All that would happen is I would end up with this expression, all the nines would cancel out, and I would arrive at the same expression for overall resistance. All of this thanks to Ohm's law. Right, you didn't come watch a process engineering video to learn about electricity, but I'm hoping that this analogy helps you understand the process for analyzing flow through parallel branches. Step one, pick a driving force. Just like we picked one volt or nine volts, pick a pressure drop across your circuit, say one bar or nine bar. Step two, get the flow that that pressure drop produces through each individual branch. We are used to thinking that x cubic meters per hour of flow causes y bar worth of pressure drop, but try to flip those around in your head. If you apply y bar worth of differential pressure across a branch, then that will result in x cubic meters per hour of flow through that branch. Step three, Add up the individual branch flows to get the total flow that would result through all branches if you were able to maintain that differential pressure across the entire system. Here's the thing, just like voltage across each individual branch in a parallel circuit is equal to the voltage across all of the branches, the pressure drop across each individual branch of a fluid circuit has to equal the total pressure drop across the system. The reason for that is you will have one common supply pressure to all branches. And if you have different pressure drops across each individual branch, you would arrive on the other side at different pressures. Now, you can't have two different pressures at the same point. So the flows through each branch would regulate themselves so that the pressure drops equalize and the two streams combine at the same pressure. Now on to step four, which we did not have when we were looking at electrical circuits. Pick a new driving force. Because of Ohm's law, I know that doubling the voltage doubles the current across the same resistor. Doubling the differential pressure across a system does not double the flow. To know what effect it has, you would need to know what the system curve for each branch looks like. So you would have to pick a new pressure drop and repeat the process. Keep going until you have covered all differential pressures you are likely to encounter in your system. Now let's look at an actual example. Right, so what I've done in the past is I've made a video with a link to a spreadsheet for liquid line sizing, and I've used that as the basis for this. Uh, go check that out if you want to see how exactly uh, this works. I'm not going to go into it here. But what I'm doing is I'm assuming I've got three branches where, with three different line sizes, three different line lengths, and each line has a different valve at a different opening. So here's, uh, and we're just pumping water at uh, ambient, ambient temperatures. So what I've got here is a, the first branch, uh, branch A has a four inch line um, of a thousand meters and in it is installed a valve with a CV of 75, 100% uh, open. And what I've got is the system curve. I've got volumetric flow rate and I've got the total system pressure drop in this column over here. Branch B, six inch line, that's three kilometers long. Uh, you, don't worry too much about the discrepancies in length. This one bends a heck of a lot more or something. 
the valve CV is uh, 80 and it's 85% open. And finally, that's not branch A, that's branch C. Uh, has a length of, uh, is an eight inch line of 750 meters with another uh, CV75 valve. These are the system curves. Uh, it should be no surprise that branch A, which is the four inch line, remember it's blue is four inch, red is six inch, uh, yellow is eight inch. The blue inch line has the steepest system curve because it is the most difficult to pass flow through it. Anyways, these are the three system curves of three branches in parallel, each taken individually. So we haven't put them in parallel yet. Remember what I said is the first step is pick a driving force. So pick the pressure drop across this line, the differential pressure across each line and see what the resultant flow is. So for example, let's pick two bar. Across branch A, I get a flow of whatever that is, 30 something. Uh, across br br branch B, I get just over 50. Across branch C, I get 80. Pick a new driving force and then do that again. And that's why I am saying you should flip the axis. Rather than having flow on the X, pressure drop on the Y, take these numbers and plot them the opposite way around, something like this. Now, it looks like this because Google Sheets is a bit of a pain in the ass to work with. This is how you need to plot them if you uh, have different X values and you want all the charts to, uh, all the series to appear on one chart. Uh, but here what I've got is these exact same curves with the X and Y axis flipped and then what I've done is I fit an equation to each of these plots. And the reason I fit an equation to it is now for a given pressure drop of two bar, I can calculate the Y value, the flow for that driving force for each one from an equation. And I can sum those up to get a total flow, which is this dark blue line. What I've got here, as the formula for generating the dark blue line is the three individual branches summed together. And now there we are, I have a system curve for the entire system and I flip it back. And what I have here is this dark blue line. It is the least steep and that should make sense because it is easier for me to put 100 cubic meters of flow through three branches in parallel, meaning I only need a pressure of uh, less than one bar to do that if I've got all three of these branches. But if I only had one of these pipelines, it would be a lot more difficult. I'd need a higher driving force. There'd be a higher pressure drop. So if I apply a differential pressure of two bar across this entire system, these three uh, branches in parallel, I will get a total flow of 175 cubic meters per hour. And the way that 175 is divided between each individual branch is this value plus that value plus that value. Easy, right?